Hey folks, I am back out of nowhere with a video uh, essentially breaking down a topic that we covered with rigid body chains a while back, but uh, skinned instead. Uh, I had a person comment and they asked me to make a video. I haven't made a video in forever, so here we go. All right, I'm going to start from scratch, hop into Blender here, select everything with Alt A, X, delete, add in a new mesh. Let's see, we're gonna add in a torus. Now we went through this process in the last video. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode. Z over to wireframe so I can see a little better. B to box select. I'm gonna select just the top half. And then we're gonna hit G to grab and then Y to extrude this up. And we've now created one chain link. I'm gonna then gonna hit tab to go out of edit mode. And then I'm gonna go into the side view and then rotate this so that it's facing up and down. That's R90 in the side view. Just gonna right click and hit shade smooth. Looks a little prettier. All right, now what we're gonna do is end up adding a, an array modifier to this, but it's not gonna connect properly unless we duplicate this object. So we're gonna, with that selected, hit shift D and then we're gonna move it up on the z-axis, and then we're gonna rotate on the z-axis by 90 degrees. Line it up just like that, kabam. Now with this, we can select both of these, hit Control J, and now they're a singular object, and then we can add in a modifier, array modifier, and we're just gonna tweak these parameters to get them to line up. Weird. Anyway, got them lined up. Now we can just up this count to whatever we want. All right, we're gonna do something like that. Looks pretty good. And just for funsies, I'm gonna add a little isosphere, icosphere. I think I've been calling this an isosphere uh, for years now. Whatever, we're gonna add this low geometry sphere up here. Right click, shade smooth, just prettying it up. I'm gonna go in and just do a little bit of adjusting on these faces to uh, make it look a little more fun. All right, that'll have to do. Looks like it'll hurt somebody. All right, so we have our chain here. What we need to do is go over to our tools and then apply our modifier here. There we go. And now we're gonna add in an armature. Sorry, I didn't wanna spend too much time uh, building the object because that's not really the idea. The idea is skinning the object. I'm gonna scale it to match one chain link. So I'm gonna go tab, edit mode, and then grab this edge, scale it just to match one chain length. And then I'm gonna hit E, drag it up on the Z axis and just keep doing that for each chain link. I'll switch to wireframe mode so I can see a little better. There we go. And now for the ball at the end, I'm gonna make one big bone. Now while we have this bone selected, if we go over here in this tab right here, we can actually see the bone assignment, that's bone 16. And if we exit, we still have that selected. So I'm gonna select that ball, and then I'm gonna hold shift and select just the armature. And then I'm gonna hit control P. And we're gonna parent to bone. So that ball is now stuck to just that bone. So if I select the armature and I hit shift tab to go into pose mode, it's gonna allow me to rotate this armature bone and it controls that ball. So what we could do um, is essentially do that for each individual chain link. But instead, I'm just gonna select the chain link, select the bones, control P and automatic with weights. Um, that is gonna pretty much, it is gonna cause deformation in the chain link as you can see right there. But with it, with it moving fast, that's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, and if you wanted to get around that, you could just uh, 
go ahead and do the process we did with the ball for each chain link. That's fine as well. It really all depends on what you're going for. Uh, with this example, something cool is you can select the armature and then go over into, oh, we don't activate it here. So if you, uh, if you hit in to bring up the uh, extra little toolbox here and select auto IK. Now, if we grab this and we bend it, everything's gonna flex accordingly. So that automatically applies inverse kinetics. This is pretty handy for a lot of things, but in this case, it allows you to maintain your original origin point at that center and still create um, different animations in order to be then used in your game engine, which I, I think is the idea for this application. So uh, what we're gonna do is first of all, um, as you can see, we're on frame one. You wanna have all the bones selected. Even though we're only moving with the large bone, you wanna have them all selected. And then hit I to insert a keyframe. And just to be safe, we'll do location, rotation, and scale. And now we're gonna adjust our frame to something like 50. and just move. It stays all nice and together and we can adjust things, of course. This is uh, more for to show you how to do it, not uh, to make the animation look nice. All right, and then we're gonna select, oop, make sure to select all the bones. There we go. And then insert a keyframe, I, location, rotation, scale. Now if we play this back, bam. This chain has now been flailed and it's, it's on a skinned animations. Now what you would wanna do is export this um, as an FBX, 3DS, whatever. I'd say an FBX and then in your, uh, let's say you're using Unity for your game engine. Um, just, just in case you don't know, um, what you can do is you drag that in and then you'll be able to essentially highlight that object and bring it in and hit control six to open up your animation tab. And if it's not down in this list right here, then instead you're gonna see it either um, down here uh, within your assets. It'll come looking like one of these icons depending on the version of Unity you have. Um, and then you're essentially able to, within your animator, uh, window here, you're able to go in and affect the timing and um, a couple other factors. So that should allow you to essentially piece all those together and have that move set. I hope this has been helpful, guys.